plastic balloon satellite, 100 feet in diameter, tall as a 10-story building, will be sent aloft folded accordion fashion inside a 26 and a half inch magnesium container. The latter is mounted in the nose of a three-stage 92-foot Thor Delta rocket. Highlighting one of the nation's proudest days in space, the satellite called Echo-1 will serve as a reflector for radio waves that bounce back to Earth, paving the way for a new kind of worldwide communications. The rocket at Cape Canaveral carries the balloon and 30 pounds of powder, which will turn to gas and inflate it at a height above 1,000 miles. And inflate it at a height above 1,000 miles. And inflate it at a height above 1,000 miles. And inflate it at a height above 1,000 miles. You think this is real? This is real? This is real? And inflate it at a height above 1,000 miles. You think this is real? This is real? This is real? And inflate it at a height above 1,000 miles. And inflate it at a height above 1,000 miles. You think this is real? This is real? This is real? Pays for salaries and expenses to 60 million dollars a year to invest some 200 million dollars in plant and laboratory facilities, and to direct or contract for new space efforts over $1 billion. Wiki bullshit. Over $1 billion. Over $1 billion. At 5.40 a.m., the launching. Then the tense moments while the rocket goes through the separation of the stages. It is only the second launching for the Thor Delta, and as shown in this animated visualization, it is living up to the expectations of the space experts who say it functions almost perfectly. With extremely precise guidance, it is placing the balloon satellite almost exactly into the desired thousand mile high circular orbit. Thousand mile high circular orbit. You think this is real? It's real. Over one billion dollars. Thirty-three minutes after launching, the balloon is released and inflated by the powder inside, which turns from a solid into gas under the sun's temperature. The big balloon, visible like a bright star, quickly bounces a recorded message by President Eisenhower between stations in California and New Jersey. And here in Washington, the chief executive listens to his own voice as it sounded when bounced from the orbiting satellite. It is a great personal satisfaction to participate in this first experiment in communication involving the use of the satellite balloon known as ECHO. This is one more significant step in the United States program of space research and exploration. Fun artist. Space expenditures will soon rise some more, from 40 cents per person per week to more than 50 cents a week for every man, woman, and child in the United States. A pre-dawn blast-off at Cape Canaveral fires a Thor rocket with a sensational payload, a balloon as big as a 13-story building. This canister released from the rocket carries within it an Echo balloon satellite, like the one that will reflect signals from space back to Earth when put into orbit next fall. Remarkable cameras carried aloft by the Thor record the brief life of the largest satellite yet as it goes 922 miles into space. The experiment is a complete success. From a 400-foot chasm in Minnesota, a huge plastic balloon rises swiftly into the sky. There's a man in the 8-foot-by-3 gondola, U.S. Air Force Doctor Major David Simons. 
on his way to being the highest man in the history of the world. From the gondola windows, he can see the curve of the Earth dropping away, and he photographs himself in his strange spaceman outfit. As he leaves the atmosphere, the stars cease to twinkle, burning steadily, as the first space travelers will see them. When Major Simons comes to land again, 32 hours later, he has spent more than a day, 19 miles up, higher than anyone has been before, the very threshold of empty space. Instruments in the gondola have recorded precious data on how the 34-year-old Major's body has reacted to his record-breaking journey. Knowledge which will help open the door to the universe. In this city, to be sure, all this costs us all a good deal of money. This year's space budget is three times what it was in January 1961 and it is greater than the space budget of the previous eight years combined. That budget now stands at $5,400,000,000 a year, a staggering sum, though somewhat less than we pay for cigarettes and cigars every year. Space expenditures, <laughs> space expenditures will soon rise some more from 40 cents per person per week to more than 50 cents a week for every man, woman, and child in the United States. For we have given this program a high national priority. Even though I realize that this is, in some measure, an act of faith and vision, for we do not now know what benefits await us. But if I were to say, my fellow citizens, that we shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away. What the fuck is this? Searchlights pierce the pre-dawn darkness at Cape Canaveral, where a suborbital flight is scheduled to test new techniques and material for the Echo Communication Satellite. The 84-foot Thor rocket has as its payload a mammoth balloon which will be inflated in space. A transmitter in the nose of the rocket will relay pictures back to the Cape of the release of the balloon. And now, blast off of the Thor. At 250 miles, the rocket will release its payload. The balloon will be triggered from the capsule and begin inflating. Scientists at the Cape watch the monitor, which shows the pictures made from the nose of the booster rocket as the capsule continues the steep climb after its release. The canister will open and the balloon will expand to its full 135-foot diameter in two seconds. But just as quickly, it comes apart at the seams, destroying itself prematurely. Spectacular end for a space balloon. Space expenditures will soon rise some more, from 40 cents per person per week to more than 50 cents a week for every man, woman, and child in the United States. Bullshit science. Bullshit science.